Howdy do, my headmaster hooligans. So many a years back ago in what feels like the ancient times of 2016, the Titans Return toy line launched right onto the shelves and absolutely rocked our heads off, both figuratively and literally, giving us new and improved updated versions of not only longtime legends and actual legends, but also shining a light on some of the strange wildfire overlooked misfits of the 1987 Transformers toy line. And it was about time since those characters are such a delight in their own right. And it's today where we're showing some love to their renditions of the iconic Decepticon Headmaster Trifecta. So now that we've crunched that info, let's get our minds over to these weird boys. It's the Decepticon Retro Headmasters. Now these three in particular are the 2020 through 2021 re-releases of the Titans Return molds exclusive to Walmart and Hasbro Pulse. They're essentially the same sculpt-wise as their 2016 versions, but with the color schemes and details meant to closely reflect that of their original G1 toys. You still with me? Alright, good. Starting off the trio, it's none other than Skullcruncher. And what a name, honestly, it's just so metal. And for a Decepticon that turns into a half-pink crocodile, I don't expect anything less. I adore this color palette here with the seaweed green, magenta, and, you know, white. This. This right here is the color I want all Hot Rod toys to be from now on. I'm really feeling these wrist claws here, like killer frills. In this mode, most of the visible paint here is seen on the chest, like he's wearing a bib, which I'm sure is useful for when he's crunching on skulls. I can't help but notice that all three of these guys have the sculpted open hands as opposed to the usual closed fist. I'm not sure why, but on Skull Cruncher it works alright for me. He's sporting this back-mounted alligator head hood that I suppose you can bring up to make it look like he's wearing a very phallic hat. But getting to his actual head, the sculpting here is just spectacular. It's so crisp and well-defined, and these retro Headmasters reissues utilize their Takara Legends head sculpts as opposed to their Hasbro counterparts. And they all look so great in my opinion, way smoother and more defined than the Titans Return versions. And Skull Cruncher's golden face here just looks irresistible with that sly, subtle smirk. This is the face of a man who likes to cause problems on purpose. Also adore the shiny painted red visor, and you can pop off the head and fold out the headmaster, Grax. There's an impressive amount of detail on these dudes for their size. Not a lot of paint, but come on, I'm not unreasonable. And for accessories, you get this white gun, which looks cool. It looks like a gun. And you also get this huge crocodile tail thing, which he can hold, I guess, to show off Grax to his buddies. I personally like to keep the gun attached to the tail and have it be on his hand blending into his arm, a bit like movie Scorn. The articulation is pretty good, maybe not up to par with 2021 Transformers, but I won't hold that against them. And from what I've heard, the leg joints on Skull Cruncher here are much stronger than the Titans Return figure, showing that not only is this figure solid, but it's also a gas. The transformation is great, easy, and fun. It's interesting seeing the humanoid robot morph into this long, slender reptilian mode, and his alt mode just looks fantastic. It's a cute little croc, all right. Really appreciate the picked out silver painting on the arms and the eponymous skull crunchers. And also, in case you were worried otherwise, his mouth can move. <laughs> Now the idea behind the Headmasters was that their head transformed into the driver of the main robot's vehicle mode, which you think wouldn't be applicable to a trio that turned into a wolf, bat, and crocodile. But lo and behold, they actually have storage for these little guys inside the main bodies, like their kitty ride. The small spikes throughout look so endearing, like he's trying to be hardcore, and the colors throughout just super appeal to me. Overall though, Skull Cruncher is a great, delightful little Decepticon croc, and he's my personal favorite of the three. Moving right along, footloose and fancy free, comes our very own wild warrior, Decepticon Weird Wolf. In case you haven't noticed, he's weird. He's a weirdo. He doesn't fit in. But this big boy comes equipped with that immediately recognizable color scheme of mustard yellow, Prussian blue, and that red face that couldn't belong to anyone else. I quite adore that square noggin he's got on, like a literal blockhead, and I sort of have a thing for the large pronounced visor that's the same color as his face here, like he's ready to get down to some business. He's armed on his arms with these shoulder launcher thingies, and looking at him up close, it's amazing how far they went with the sculpting. Like these silver V-shaped shin vents on the Infinity War flying donuts on his knees. The slide comes with this radical curved sword, which fits into his hand all nice and snug. But he also comes with this big goofy blaster thing that, due to the sculpted open hands, gets knocked out a bit more easily than I'd like. And because of the ridges on the handle, he can't seem to point his blaster directly forward. It doesn't let the figure down exponentially, it just sort of dampens the fun a bit. 
But even then, you can't take the weird out of this wolf, and sculpt-wise, paint-wise, and everything else-wise, this is more than a satisfying update to the original block of wolf parts glued to it that made up the original toy's robot mode. The transformation is super interesting with how the wolf hands scoop into the forearms, the wolf legs spring out of the robot legs, and how the wolf body flips out of the robot back. It's like a werewolf transformation scene, but like, on a kid's toy. And this wolf mode looks pretty glorious. Like, it's a yellow and blue armored mechanical wolf creature, so obviously it's awesome. The sculpting strikes again here, and they even picked out the inside of the mouth in silver. I like the very 80s purple arrow things on his sides, and interestingly, the huge blaster blends in better in the wolf mode than in the robot mode. Taking a look at his headmaster buddy, this is Monzo. There isn't really much to him, but at least they left a dab of red paint on his head, making him look like a crate-colored Boba Fett and he's ready to ride inside this red translucent cockpit piece. I advise being a bit careful with this red piece since it had a pretty poor reputation of breaking on basically every copy of the original Titan's Return figure. Mine's been pretty good to me so far, but just don't be too weird with your wolf, alright? But overall, this is a great wolf mode that looks so badass no matter how you pose him. And all around, this just makes for a delightful robo-dog. I've always loved the name Weird Wolf too. It's just so unique for a Transformer and perfectly captures a sense of old schlocky horror movies. Weird Wolf? <laughs> or as I call him, <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> Moving on to the final piece of the Headmaster Trio comes the malicious maestro of mayhem that is Mindwipe. I think looking at the big picture, Mindwipe is the least refined of the three, but there's still plenty to like about this guy, certainly. I like the big, back-mounted brown bat wings, and the color scheme of purple and black is extremely attractive. But this figure does have some features that I'm kind of not really into, like the exposed pegs on the outside of his arms here, and some of the proportions are a bit wonky, like how thin his torso is compared to his legs, and how he's got only a millimeter of thigh and a full mile of shin. I guess this does pay off in the transformation, but it does kind of stick out to me. But that doesn't stop the sculpted detail from absolutely crushing it again here. Everything looks so visually interesting while not being too overly developed. And I adore that head sculpt. Everything's so crisp and clear, and it's keeping the uniform theme of red visors. And I like the cheekbones so pronounced they'd make Peter Cushing blush. Mind Wipe comes with this purple blaster, which isn't too big but looks sensationally awesome. And he can even aim it forward and everything. You listening, Weird Wolf? And he also comes with this... thing. I gotta be real, I'm not really sure what it is. A shield? A dual blaster thing? Some sort of claw weapon? All of the above? I don't even dislike it, I'm just in the dark here. But in general, Mindwipe is still an endearing bat bot with a lot to love. The transformation really brings it, and the way the legs unfold into the bat wings is just genius. And it all lets you fly on over to this weird bat mode. I really like this, it's a little strange and questionable in some areas, but I'm willing to play along with it. I can't imagine making something as inhuman as a bat out of a humanoid robot is especially easy. I love these enormous imposing wings here, and they have three points of articulation each which is incredible and makes them really fun to mess around with. The robot bat wings are just chilling out behind him, but I think that gives him a bit of extra flair. The bat head sculpt also looks superb, with so much mechanical intrigue, adore the large ears and the red eyes, he looks like he's got some secrets. And like the rest of the trio, you can make his mouth open. Yo, the name is Batty. Moving to the Headmaster, this is Vorath. Again, these three don't stop with the fantastic names. Now, I don't need much from the Headmasters, honestly, since they're not the reason I buy the toys. However, I do appreciate how the face and even the eyes are painted. He fits inside Mindwipe's robot guts, but it can be a bit tricky getting him back out. That said, I really like how the compartment is shaped like a coffin sticking to the vampire inspiration. His accessories are back to remind you that they exist, and his claw thing can fit on his back here like a tail. And you know what? Th this actually doesn't look too bad. I can buy this. There isn't really much to do with the blaster, but whatever, you know? Are you keeping it in this mode? Do you not have any available space to keep this? The bat mode overall is very enjoyable. At the very least, it looks way better than the G1 toy, which looks like a cube with wings. But yeah, Mindwipe is a pretty brilliant Batman overall. He might not be Adam West, but I guess he's better than Ben Affleck. It might not be as great as the other two figures, but he's still a worthy and valid member of the team. 
and that's the Decepticon Retro Headmasters. These three are a lovely group of gumptuous guys and are great modern versions of the characters. I love all three of these Beast Boys, truly. And even though they all work individually as satisfying toys, I feel like they all belong together. Like a pack of animals, who are different animals. That's a thing, right? I'm making it a thing. Now go out there and try to live your best life, sunshine.